2020 uh, will come to order. Uh, roll call, Director Barney. Present. Director Coleman. Here. Director Deaver. Here. Director Morgan. Director Morgan. Okay. And Director Ballantyne here. Uh, next item is approval of the agenda. <clears throat> Motion to approve the agenda. All right, Bill. I have a second. Seconded. And Diane. Are there any public comments on the agenda? All right, all in favor? Director Barney? Aye. Director Coleman? Aye. Director Deaver? Aye. <clears throat> And Director Valentine, aye. Community announcements. Member of the audience may make announcements regarding community events. Do we have anyone out there that would like to make an announcement? Yes. Uh, please have the. All right. I assume that's none. No, yeah, there, there is one. There is one. There is one. All items on the consent, consent calendar are considered routine and non-controversial and will be approved by one motion unless a board member, staff, or public request to move an item to an action item. We have two items, item A and B. Item A is minutes of the special board meeting uh, February 12th of this year. Item B is minutes of the regular board meeting February 16th of this year. We get a motion to approve the consent calendar. Deaver, uh, move to approve. Okay, thank you, Bill. Um, do I have a second? Seconded. Second by Director Barney. Are there any public comments on the consent calendar? All right. Uh, Roll call, Director Barney. Aye. Director Coleman. Aye. Director Deaver. Aye. Director Valentine. Aye. Consent calendar's been approved. Uh, next item are the action items. Item A, uh, Mr. CEO, would you like to take that? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, item A is uh, relative to an option by Newport Development LLC for five acres west of Taxiway Bravo Bravo. I'm going to let Floyd uh, give more specifics on that. And if you have any questions, he'll, he'll answer for us. Go ahead, Floyd. Certainly. So uh, Newport Development is, is uh, actually the company that uh, is currently I've been working with the district for the last year or so. And they are currently uh, in process of installing the solar uh, installation west, uh, or excuse me, east of Building 67, and uh, their their next effort is uh, they'd like to evaluate uh, developing a hangar off of Bravo Bravo. Uh, it's approximately ballpark 10 to 15 thousand square foot commercial hangar for future commercial loot use. So uh, Newport is is requesting a 12 month option so that they can begin survey and and planning. On that parcel for that purpose. Floyd, are we able are we able to show the position for the public where that is located? Yeah, Jason could pull that up. Jason. So it's the area that's uh, shaded in red south of Building 100, uh, maybe on the west side of Bravo Bravo. And uh, if you go to the next exhibit, it's actually just a, a property detail. All right. Um I had a question. I realize this is just an option, so I don't want to get too far into the weeds. Um, let's assume that this company ends up developing a hangar on Taxiway Bravo Bravo. Will that require 
any additional um, upgrades that will require funding from the airport on that particular taxiway. I'm thinking lights and maybe other other things necessary to support any sort of development on that taxiway, or is it is it good enough as is? And if the uh, customer decides to build, is is that going to be the customer's responsibility? So the the ramp and any improvements to the taxiway side would be the customer's responsibility. Um, we would not need to improve any of the lighting or or any infrastructure on the taxiway for a hangar that size. All right, all right. Because I, my understanding, and I could be wrong, is there is there, is there lighting on taxiway Bravo Bravo? Uh, a portion of Bravo Bravo is lit. Um, the, the corner section there where the option is is not lit, but it's also unlit uh, in front of hangers 101 and 100. Okay, okay, that that's clear, that's good enough for me. I, I don't want to get, like I say, into the weeds too far. I just was thinking about the option there in future development. Um, are there any questions from the, the board members? Uh, any Hi. questions from the general? Oh, go ahead, Diane. Sorry, yeah, a quick question. Um, th this is intended for aerospace use, you know, using the taxiway for uh, air, air vehicle usage, right? Uh, have they stated that, or is this uh, just in the exploratory you know, option phase? It is technically in the exploratory option phase, but it is, is only under the, uh, the understanding with Newport that it is for specifically an aircraft hangar. Great. Thank you. Mr. Coleman has a question. Good. Yes, Jeff, go ahead. What's the size of the hangar? I'm trying to find that in the literature. It's not in the <laughs> literature. Uh, it, it would be approximately... 10 to 15,000 square foot. Okay, very good, thank you. This is just an option on the land. Correct. It's just an option. Yes, it's, it gives them the opportunity to do the planning that they need to do, access the property, and, and put together a proposal that will answer all these specific questions. All right, uh, do any other directors have uh, any questions? Do I have any questions from the public? Okay, then I am looking for a motion to approve uh, an option for five acres on taxiway Bravo Bravo for Newport Development LLC. Can I get a motion? Motion from Deaver to approve. Thank you, Bill. Can I get a second? Second by Clark. <laughs> I think Second I heard like that one. That wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was Director Blaze seconding the motion. <laughs> oh, okay. I have a motion by uh, Director uh, Deaver, second by Director Coleman. Are there any other questions? I'm sorry. Uh, I'll take the roll call vote. Director Barney? Aye. Director Coleman? Aye. Director Deaver? Aye. And Director Ballantyne, aye. Uh, Director Ballantyne, I believe that Director Morgan has joined the meeting at this time. I have. Are you there? Oh, okay. Sorry, Bob. Okay. I'll put you back on the list. Uh, okay. Uh, Director Morgan? Aye. And Director Ballantyne's and I. So that's a unanimous. Uh, next okay. item, item B. And B, uh, every so often we destroy records that have aged long enough um, and we get rid of them and make room for more. Lynn, is there anything I'm missing on that? No, these are standard documents that have reached their expiration date and we are ready to get them shredded. All right. That's all I have. Are there any questions from the directors on this? Yes. Uh, Director Morgan wants to know what's what's the vintage of these records? Uh, did you read your agenda? It's in the agenda, I think. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is standard. Every yeah, so he has to do this all the time. Look at 
Board of Supervisors, School Board agendas, it's always in there. But if I may, Director Ballantyne, may I say something for um, those who may not be familiar with records destruction? Sure, Scott, go ahead. Uh, so there are a couple of provisions of state law that govern how public agencies both retain records and how they destroy them. And there are set periods of time that we are required by law to keep records. After that time has expired, the district may destroy those records, and it is required to keep a list in perpetuity of all records that have been destroyed. Uh, and legal counsel is required to sign off as well as board approval. Lynn has put together our standard records destruction policy uh, uh, resolution, I'm sorry, resolution, and attached as an exhibit is a list of all of the documents that are to be destroyed by category. Uh, you'll see that they go anywhere from 2008 through 2014. And the reason for the different dates is because some records must be kept for different periods of time. The uh, Secretary of State has published guidelines for local agencies to use, and those guidelines, as well as the statutes, are what Lynn and I use in determining what records should be destroyed and when they should be destroyed. That's it. Thank you, Scott. Um, are there any other questions from the board members? None being, are there any questions from the public? So, is it too much unreasonable to just answer my question what the vintage of the record says? Sure. So let me say that they range from 2005 to 2015, I think is the latest that I see on here. And there are two pages of categories uh, of accounts receivable, accounts payable, fuel inventories, payrolls. Uh, I'm trying to see if there are any other audit backup documents, paid invoices, credit card statements. So it's a range of about 15 years of documents across a variety of categories. Uh, does it's that answer your it. question, Director Morgan? It does. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I'll go back again. Uh, are there any more questions from the board? And do we have any questions from the general public regarding the destruction of public records? Certain public records. Okay, can I get a motion to approve this item? B? Uh, motion, on, to, motion to approve the destruction of the articulated records. Mm -hmm. A motion by Director Barney. Do I have a second? Second by Deaver. All right, thank you, Bill. Okay, we'll have a roll call. Director Barney? Aye. Director Coleman? Aye. Director Deaver? Aye. Director Morgan? Aye. And Director Ballantyne? Aye. Motion's carried. Uh, next item, item C, resolution adopting updated multi jurisdiction. Hazard mitigation plan. Uh, I'll let the, has, I'll let John Himes handle that. All right. Good afternoon. John? Good afternoon, uh, board. Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Else. Curry County multi-jurisdiction hazard mitigation plan is something that Mavir at Spaceport has participated in since 2011. Essentially, the adoption of the resolution provides for our inclusion within the county framework, 58 other jurisdictions of participating, uh, an ability for the county and the district to access emergency management or FEMA uh, funding and grant opportunities, and also an ability to access technical resources. Since 2011, we've provided a subject matter export to the planning committee of the Kern County Multi-Hazard Jurisdiction Mitigation Plan. And uh, I am standing by for further questions. All right. Any board members have any questions on this? 
Ming Bing, anyone from the public have any questions on this item? All right, can I get a motion to approve item C, resolution adopting the updated multi-jurisdiction hazard mitigation plan? Looking for a motion. Motion by Deaver to approve. Okay, thank you, Bill. All right, no second. We'll move on to reports. General Manager. Excuse me, Mr. Ballantyne, may I interrupt? Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> Can't help myself. So this document allows us, for those that haven't read the agenda and read the backup documentation, it enables FEMA, the Federal Emergency uh, Management uh, Department, provide assistance in, in program funding opportunities should things arise. This is, uh, this is something that's updated every so many years, and it's absolutely um, appropriate that this be passed by the board. So I would hope, Mr. Ballantyne, that you would reconsider and that there would be a second from somebody so that you can take a vote on this. Um, I'll, I'll reconsider it this one time, but when we go through items like this and we get a motion, I, I would expect a, a second in a timely matter. If not, I'll consider that there is no second and we'll just move on to the next yeah. item. So I'll revisit item C, resolution adopting updated multi-jurisdiction hazard mitigation plan. Do I have a motion? Motion by Deaver to approve. Thank you, Bill. Do I have a second? Second by Coleman. Thank you, Chuck. All right, roll call. Director Barney? Aye. Director Coleman? Aye. Director Deaver? Aye. Director Morgan. Director Morgan is muted at this time. Aye. And Director Ballantyne. Aye. Motion's carried. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Financial reports. Sure, that go ahead. She disappear on me. Uh, I don't see her. She is there, but she is muted. She is muted. Jason, are you live? Can you help Carrie out? Okay, well, I'll take it. Um, you'll see our cast for the period went from. 8,138 or 8,138,000 to 8,268,000. Um, I'm back on if you guys can hear me. Okay, Carrie, I just reported on the cash. from there. Okay, these, are the, these are the financial reports for month ending January 31st. Uh, you'll see the bank balance increased 130,000. And that was primarily because we did get our COVID reimbursement of 46,000 uh, from Kern County. Uh, and our fuel sales year to date is 850,000 gallons. On the AR, there's no new tenants added. Jose Lopez is continuing to make small payments and Dragon Aviation is continuing to make their current payment as long as, as well as with some other additional payments. And the fitness center, I did talk with them and they are prepping to get ready, open back up in the next 48 hours once they get the green light. Oh, that's amazing news. Thank you, Kara. We just got to wait for the state of California to give us the green light to open. <laughs> Glad to hear that. Yep, that's all I got. All right. Thank you, Kerry. Uh, CEO, General Manager's report. Uh, the only thing I have is uh, five new leases that are outlined in my report with California Air Sales, MCQ, Kern County Transit, and two with Flight Research. 
And uh, that concludes my report. All right. Is there any questions uh, from the board regarding those reports? All right. Uh, there's no board committees. Board of Directors, this portion of the meeting is reserved for board members to comment on items not on the agenda. Any board members have any comments? Oh, yeah, quick question. So, um, I heard that there might be um, some minor re renovations going on in the Pilots' Lounge. I was just uh, curious to hear any words about that or if that was an unfounded rumor. Floyd, uh, do, you want, do you want to answer that? There are, there, are, there are renovations going yes. on. That is that is correct. Yeah, so we, we relocated the pilot's lounge across the hall, and the reason being, uh, last year there was a lot of talk about uh, accessibility upgrades to this building for public access, parking, and entrance into the building. So we had opted to, uh, the most efficient way to do that was to relocate the pilot's lounge and relocate our our building entrance to the south facing wall so that's that's why the uh, pilot's lounge is relocated but it's it has not been removed it's up and running and uh, available all right thank you yeah it looks nice and, and the fact that the pilots can now look out to the um, to the taxiways and the parking i think is a great value so uh mr right. chairman i have a beaver uh, several times over the years, I have asked when we're going to have, is this going to happen within the next century? It, that, Bill, that is tied into specifically why we had to relocate the, the uh, pilot's lounge. So to answer your question, yes. <laughs> oh, okay. My request had a very positive side effect. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Are there any other directors? If I, uh, I heard somebody. Was that you, Dave? Yeah, but it's not my turn. I'm sorry, I interrupted. Well, okay, I'll I'll ask again. Are there any other board members that would like to make any comment? Okay, go ahead, Dave. Um, I just wanted to let uh, Director Barney know that I flew um, an approach into one two a couple of weeks ago. And um, I validate her concern on the Pappy. So we're working on that. Um, not sure exactly what our solution is going to be, but Floyd is doing everything from talking to the manufacturer um, to have it uh, recalibrated to possibly getting a new one. So I just wanted to update Director Barney on that. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, all right, at this time we'll uh, move into closed session. <clears throat> I believe if there was any of the public that would like to uh, remain, you'll be put, in, put into the waiting room and then you'll be notified when the uh, board reports out on closed session. Um, so thank you everyone for attending and we're in the closed session right now. Director Valentine? Yes, Director Valentine? Uh, can we cover item six, public comment on items not on, not on the agenda? Oh, sorry, Scott. No problem. It's right in the line of my, it's in the line of my bifocal. Yes, public comment on items not on the agenda. Does anybody have any public comment? All right, one being, we will now move into closed session. And again, thank you, everyone. All right, we'll wait for uh, Jason to make sure he clears the board to just close session attendee i'm sorry it's open it's open now okay meetings back into open session scott uh in closed session the board discussed the ceo public employee appointment potential litigation involving scaled composites low property negotiations with maston for building 54 and staff brief the board on potential threats to public service no items were no other items were discussed and no action was taken thank you scott and everyone have a great rest of the day meetings adjourned thank you, thank you.